Hello, it's Ed Lattimore, and we are here with the Stoic Street Smarts Podcast. This is the show where I take what I've learned the hard way, and I break it down for you so you can learn it the easy way. Yesterday, I saw this video floating around on Twitter where some guy pulled up to Nancy Pelosi's house, pulled his pants down, and took a dump right there in her driveway. Now, before we uh, get into anything political, let me just say, and those of you who follow me on social media and know me in real life know what I'm about to say is is 100% fact. I do not care about politics. I don't even pay attention to them. I couldn't tell you uh, who Nancy Pelosi is or what she stands for. I've chosen to remain willfully ignorant on that subject. Judge me all you want about it. I find that it keeps me sane. I look at people who have... Uh, bought into the political division and the outrage in this country and decided that I want no parts of that, not in my mind, not in my body, not in my soul. It ain't going to get in. I'm keeping that shit out. So with that said, uh, I don't know who or what Nancy Pelosi uh, stands for, or what she does. What I will say is Whatever she stands for, whatever she does, motivated some guy enough to pull up to her driveway, uh, pull his pants down, cop a squat, and also for another guy to film it, and then they they put this out on the net. All right. Now, my first thought when I was watching this was that if there were going to be some real consequences to this action, they probably wouldn't done it. And I'm not talking about legal consequences, right? Um, I don't. I'm not a legal scholar, but I would imagine that taking a squat uh, on, on somebody's property while illegal is certainly not going to give you any heavy jail time. I'm talking about if they thought somebody was going to come out and put a beat down on them, at the very least, uh, threaten to put a beat down on them, and maybe take their photo and put it up and and really. Um, embarrass them, make make them feel the effects of what they had done. And it got me thinking that this is a prevalent problem in today's society. People are completely divorced from the consequences of their actions. Uh, I never had the, the luxury of being divorced from anything uh, that I would do. I knew that if I did a thing, there would be an, a, a reaction. And, you know, I had to make sure if I was going to to walk that walk, I had to be ready. Or if I was going to talk that talk, I had to be ready to walk the walk that it was going to require. Uh, my mom used to say, you know, people that live in glass houses don't throw rocks, you know, that kind of thing. There's, there's all kind of um, tropes that, that we grew up with, and and this is not just unique. I think to to my background, and I, I covered that in the last video. But I think a lot of people who are pre-internet age, a lot of people who had their formative years in an environment where you didn't rely on on social media and sending messages to people in their in their DMs to communicate. I think a lot of us intuitively just came up with a respect for what we said or what we did because you know if I want to say something mean to you I have to say it to you I mean sure I could go like the passive route and, and maybe send you a thing on AIM Messenger <laughs> oh, yeah AIM Messenger but I had to have your screen name and, and if you're older than me yeah, and that reference doesn't make any sense then you had no recourse you had to say something to somebody and when you did that you got to see how they would respond uh, you got to see if you made somebody cry, man, you had to sit there and watch the tears. And, and if you had any type of empathy in your body, you would hopefully feel bad and perhaps apologize or soften the blow. You learned how to communicate with this very quick uh, feedback, negative or positive. And, you know, you, you, today people can't. What's the big deal? You know, uh, the big thing people talk about. No one, you know, approaches people on the street for romantic encounters or even to start up a conversation because everyone comes off as awkward and they come off as awkward because they're not used to dealing with the real time feedback from a person's physiological reaction to the words that come out of your mouth. You, you can't 
learn that when all their communication is digital. And that's really where we are right now. A lot of you, you can get away with having it from working. You can, you can work. Most of us work from home and the work from home revolution is amazing in, in what it does for cleaning up the traffic on the road and the pollution. And there's probably uh, much greater efficacy and people can spend time with their, with their kids or something if they need to, you know, uh, work out that type of arrangement. But another thing it does is it removes the in-person film, mean, even even with a with a Skype video. Um, I can't tell how, you know, how, if, if you're breathing, unless you, you're, you're breathing really raises up. Right. I can't really tell, you know, how your pupils are moving. And you may not even think about these things when you are communicating with someone, but they're, they're going on and you are having a real time calibration to it unless you're like a complete psychopath uh, you're having a real-time calibration to it and you, you're you're changing your words you're changing how you move how you present yourself and all of these things together and it's making you a better communicator and and we're losing i think the ability to communicate meaningfully because we are divorced from the consequences of communication via the internet uh, another thing that's probably fueling this is the introduction of a concept of, of, of the concept of, of safe spaces. You know, uh, I'm not like pro or anti bullying. I don't think you should be mean to people, that kind of thing. I think you should do your best to be a good person, right? With that said, I know that for whatever reason, not everyone is going to share that, that um, attitude. And those people exist, and <laughs> there are probably more of them than we than we care to deal with, or care to at least acknowledge. And when you have to deal with these these types of antagonists, you learn real quick. Uh, you, first of all, you learn very quickly uh, what happens when you get out of line with the wrong people. You know, you most people, you, you you can cut them off in traffic and they're just going to gripe about it in their car every so often, at least once a year, uh, a few times a year. I say I read some story where somebody cut somebody off, you know, and they were being an asshole and they didn't think anything was going to happen. And then the person follows them down. And and at the very least, best case scenario, they, you know, rattle some sabers outside the car and really make the person feel scared. And, and, you know, worst case, you know, people have been been killed over these things. And that is not the typical reaction. The point of me bringing that up is for us to recognize and realize and discuss and think about how, you know, that is a possible reaction. And what do you gain? It's like an expected value problem, right? Uh, what do you gain if... You just do things uh, politely if you treat people with respect. You know, you, you gain, at the worst, a good day, right? Um, or at least a day that is not going to be significantly altered unless the person is truly crazy, right? But but what do you gain by, by going out of your way to kind of piss somebody off and step on their toes? Well, at best, you gain nothing. But and that, that's like the best case scenario. Uh, as opposed to being the worst case scenario when you do right by the people. But when you when you when you do harm to other people or when you antagonize other people, not believing that there will be any there will be any real consequence and then there is one, well now you've opened up a whole other can of worms, uh, in a situation that you were probably not expecting to get into if for any other reason than you behaved that way in the first place. And so there is now someone that's like, I'm not taking that today. I don't care. You know, like I always say, um, you never know who doesn't care about going to jail. And to get to jail, you got to break the law. And if it's <laughs> with you being a victim, it's not probably going to be a uh, pleasant experience. You, know, you, so you, you want to avoid that thing whenever you can. But but the bigger the bigger idea here is that, you know, when we're, when we're brought up and we don't, we, we, we never have to fight. We never have to deal with these because because these people show up as early as, as kindergarten, you know, there's bullies everywhere and 
people who are going to try and take advantage of you and you and if you never have to figure out how to deal with them how to defend them how to how to ward them off if the people who aren't even uh bullies uh don't feel like they can uh express themselves or take retaliation against you when you do something awful you never learn uh, the awful things not to do you never learn how to defend yourself you never learn what the signs look like for somebody who kind of wants to make people's lives hard for no other reason and it brings them satisfaction so you get yourself into situations that are not going to be too easy to get out of and and I think I think there's an optimal balance, right? You know, we want to eliminate as much of this as possible because that's just, you know, what what people want to do for for children and humans in general. But we also have to acknowledge that uh, the only way a, a thing grows stronger or becomes more capable is if it encounters a hardship and it overcomes said hardship, and if we remove all the hardships, then we, in the short term, are creating an enjoyable environment, right? I don't, I don't think there's any kid who would say, uh, "I'm happy that no one picks on me," or "I'm, I'm unhappy that no one picks on me." Like I don't, I don't think you'll ever hear that statement. But in the long run, you know, the the world is a more interconnected place, and we're more is a discussed earlier in the video we're more divorced from the consequences of our words when someone says something mean to them or they don't get their way you know, uh, as an adult now where there's real consequences and not as many built-in buffers though they continue to try and place those on us you know that's just here in the in in one place in the globe the, the, the entire world is not going to be so coddling or even had the same set of traditions and methodologies for 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 trying to decrease the level of, of violence or may not even have the incentive to. Anyhow, when we, anyhow, when we become adults and if we haven't had that training as a child, it's going to be very it, it will be more difficult, I think, to make a person learn to respect the barriers of the, the the barriers of I guess a person's temper you know everyone has has a a thing that that sets them off and and you can avoid most of these things if you just learn to be respectful but if you're never forced to learn to be respectful because every time you were disrespectful um, there was a severe penalty uh, almost a dissuading penalty for uh, the, the someone lashing out at you kicking back at you uh, you'll become an adult and you will not know how to carry yourself in the most polite way. I mean, and and or I would say mannerable. Uh, you know, you don't have to be. I always, always say this: the the challenge is is being kind and polite without being a doormat. You know, I think people get those things confused. Um, but they are very different. One is actively trying to make people feel good actively putting your best foot forward uh that's when you are being polite being respectful being manner having, having you know developed manners but on the other end uh when you are just a, just a doormat and a yes person and trying to avoid confrontation well, well there it is it's an avoidance activity you're trying to keep things from happening you're trying to prevent any type of interaction that could become volatile so you don't stand up for yourself you don't push back and i think this is another consequence of people being you know separated from the cause uh and effect having those two parts broken apart in their daily communication like we we're at now um if you don't if you don't ever have to figure out how to stand up for yourself and get things done because the the environment you're in just makes sure it happens or everything is going just well enough to where you don't really feel the need to exert yourself and push then when it 
becomes adult time and uh, people are not going to be there and not going to call on wait for you or you're going to have a challenge it's going to be a big challenge uh, I, I think about one of the things that i greatly benefited from uh growing up and my mom was a big fan of the, the saying is uh that the quiet miles don't get fed and if you're uh if, if you <laughs> if you don't come from a house where like you're gonna we, we, we hear a thing like that, then you're probably going to be a little more passive in how you go about acquiring things. And, and the world does not generally reward passivity. It doesn't always punish it, but you can fall behind. And the, the big problem with, with that, with falling behind in that manner anyhow is that people will steamroll you they will take advantage of you they will simply view you as a stepping stone um at best perhaps someone to not hurt but usually just an obstacle to get through and i think a lot of this comes back to i mean it's a, it's a there are multi multiple reasons it's a multivariate issue but i think one big thing we can do is we can remember that there are consequences for things we say and consequences for things we do and we can't let the internet fool us we can't we'll look at these videos that have um god's crap on people's uh driveways thinking oh that's cool or to a um a more violent or more extreme extent you know one of the things that i, I really despise despite my background this always surprises people but uh, I really hate the fight videos um, when you look at the fight videos it's people who don't have a, respe a healthy respect for violence and they find out the hard way many times what can happen when a person with some intent some bad intent decides they want to hurt you and, and we are entertained by that and it's unfortunate because that's it's turned into, and I don't mean like a sanctioned contest. I think people have respect for that. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But I mean, when we watch the street videos, we forget that that those punches, man. Those people got to recover from those, man. They can be permanently altered. It ain't it ain't too hard to break somebody's uh, eyeball socket or their jaw. And for us, it's entertainment, and it and it doesn't look that bad in the moment. It never does because you're you're separated from it. You're not you're not there. You don't see it. And then so next thing you know, uh, you get into a fight. You think it's not going to be a big deal if you you get hit or you hit somebody, and then next and then uh, you alter someone's life, and then you're in you're in trouble. This has just been a thought that's been on my mind uh, lately. When I started this particular video, I was just thinking about how that that uh crapper video as we'll call it the reason why people feel comfortable doing that kind of thing is how the internet has made us very very comfortable uh doing and saying the thing without having an immediate consequence or, or hopefully a delayed one for that person but uh, when you let people get away with things there's going to be problems but i think a bigger problem and one we can address is making sure that people don't feel compelled to get away with things in the first place because they know there will be a consequence so on that note i bid you adieu and until the next time the rest is up to you